Okay, what we're gonna do in this video is take a look at the display tag. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the display tag has several different uses and we're gonna take a look at most of those here today. Um, so that's what you're seeing here, just have a figure. Um, couple of sphere or cubes here, one with a Voronoi fracture set up with some dynamics, the other um, just kind of keyframed to match it. And then lastly, a sphere that we may um, create something else as well. Let's get started with the figure here. And what we're going to do is right click on it, go to render tags and choose the display tag. Now, one of the uses of the display tag is that it allows you to override um, the current display mode you have set up for your perspective view or whatever view you're looking in. And this can be helpful if you have a very high resolution object, has a lot of um, you know materials on it, textures, and you wanna just kind of simplify it. Uh, maybe it's in a cloner and you don't wanna have a bunch of different figures or people uh, visible because it's slowing you down. What you can do is set a specific shading mode for whatever you apply this to. So whether that's lines, whether it's um, hidden lines, you name it. All of the same shading options um, in display styles that you can access right here, you can find in the display mode. And I've used this in the past if I'm doing an architectural visualization project. And like I said, a bunch of people and I just want to uh, make them a little bit easier to see. So uh, maybe you just switch this to say box and you get a simplified version of it. Okay, level of detail can work similar though. Um, honestly, I don't use it a whole lot because uh, the shading mode and the other options above it work similarly. Uh, now instead, or along with that, we have the visibility here. Now this works very much like uh, opacity in After Effects. So um, you can animate this zero to 100. You won't see the change really, aside from zero in any other value until you render this. So if I just keyframe this going from the visibility of zero, to maybe visibility of 100 here, and then render this out in my picture viewer, we will then start to see the figure here fade in. Okay, and you'll see the same thing if I play this, just kind of fades in. Now I wanna point out though, that when he is fading in, he or she, that you can actually see through the other pieces you can see to the backside. So it's not 100% like the same because these objects are three dimensional, but it's very, very similar to animating the opacity and after effects and, be, and can be a great way to make um, objects appear or even disappear. Now, speaking of that, another very common situation for that is when you may have dynamics. And let's say we had a glass cube here that I wanted to go in and animate kind of falling and shattering. Okay, well, if you apply a glass material to, and I'll just do something with the standard material here. So just turn on transparency, perfect. We got glass, put it on my Voronoi fracture um, and shoot, should have added uh, a light here, but let's just do physical sky to get something. Um, we'll see that we can actually see the individual pieces inside. Now, there are actually ways you can work with this in the Voronoi fracture to get around this, but I think one of the, the easiest ways is instead to have a second cube. Okay, so a cube like I have here, if I just hide the other one. And what I'm gonna do is have this cube be visible until the item hits, the cube hits the ground, and then I'll switch them out using the display tag here. So first I'm gonna find what frame these this hits the ground, and as it turns out, it's about 30, okay? So what I'll do is on the whole cube, add a display tag and set its visibility to be frame 29, visibility 100. Make sure you use this and not the uh, radio button or, or keyframe icon here where that is just toggling on or off the ability to use that property. And then at frame 30, I'm gonna set this to zero. Now really I should be using um, the hold or step interpolation to help me with this, but I think we'll be okay for today here. 
So now you can see right when this hits the ground, it disappears. And this would also have the glass material on it. Uh, what I will do now is on the Voronoi fracture, do the opposite. So it gets a display tag as well. And it's gonna start out with a visibility of zero at frame 29. And then at frame 30, its visibility goes up to 100. Okay, and now when I play this back, we get this cube that honestly, it's hard to see it. So let me select it. Maybe that'll help a bit. All right, you know what I could do? In my display tag, uh, turn on use here and override the shading mode. Although it looks like um, it's not, there we go. Can just turn off the materials. Um, just like uh, another one of the properties down there. Hide the sky as well. See this? So now we should be able to visualize this much easier now. So we have that whole solid cube visible right up until it hits the ground and then we switch it out. And you know, if I render this, we'll see that, yep, it looks like a solid object. So that's another common use for the display tag. And then lastly, for the display tag, we have the ghosting options. So if I add the display tag to my sphere here, and you'll see we have a whole separate tab for this. And what I can do is hit enable and decide on the draw mode, whether I want it to be the object or the point or access, any of these others. We'll keep it as object though, just to um, get the idea. You can also adjust the shading mode. I'm gonna switch it just to the regular um, shading mode so we can see these. And what we'll see, all right, after we cache this, is what our cube is gonna be doing. So we're seeing the ghosted position of this cube or animation of this cube um, before and after the keyframe. So the way this works is you have your frame steps, which will show you a new sphere every three frames, okay? And we are seeing up to, or not up to, but 12 frames before the previous keyframe, and our keyframe is at zero. Um, when we are seeing um, 12 frames after um, our keyframe, that's at zero as well. And we can see the different colors here. So that's what we're seeing. We're seeing four cubes here, one for each of the um, three steps, uh, divided by 12 is four. So, you know, first, uh, let's see, math is hard right now, but hopefully you get it. And now I can script through and we can see the before and after positions of this sphere. And what this can be helpful for is to kind of visualize um, ease ins, ease outs, the speed of things. Okay. Um, and, you know, turning the frame steps, maybe like this down to say six, maybe this down to one. And you kind of get a similar idea, but maybe a little bit better overall kind of indication of what we're seeing with this ghosting and how that represents uh, the motion. Uh, now this is the most common way you can instead just use a range or use specific keyframes or um, specify things in the custom section here. But um, this can be really helpful for previewing animations. Like I said, seeing ease ins, ease outs, or other speed adjustments, really almost more for character related stuff, um, but can also be useful for uh, what we're, we're seeing here with just a simple object. All right, now I wanna point out that even while this looks like geometry, it is not geometry. And if you were to render this, you are not going to see it. So it's just a visual representation. Oh no. Um, but I would be curious to see if it's possible to get uh, those ghosted spheres to render. That's something I'll have to look into. Um, but with Cinema 4D crashing and that being pretty much all there is with the display tag, I'll go ahead and end this video. So let me know if there's anything else you want to see and take care.